today is a Thanksgiving feast drawing day. And how many of you guys uh, know the Norman Rockwell painting Thanksgiving? Does anyone know it? Raising your hand. Have you ever seen it? It's okay if you haven't. So I'm going to show you his painting right here. And so this is a painting by Norman Rockwell. Um, I forget what year it was done, um, but if I had to guess it was the 1940s. And the, um, the cool thing about this painting is it really, it, for the Americans, I'm not going to give it the specific chapter in American life, but I'm going to talk about the, the painting, what it meant to Americans thematically in general up until now. And so this painting is very much about just giving, it's just a grateful heart that we have a country where there's a huge, I'm going to go back to the painting, there's a huge turkey uh, being served and there's all family members around and everyone is happy to see each other. Um, so it's really a painting by Norman Rockwell that just says <laughs> very simply, I'm grateful, I'm thankful. So I want to go into the specifics of how he constructed this painting. And in constructing this painting, um, we're going to then ourselves, we're going to build uh, the painting out in abstract terms. And then we're going to focus in on like one face. So with that, I'm going to pause and we're going to jump over we're going to go roll backwards a few centuries to an artist named Luca Cambiasso. So check out Luca Cambiasso's work. So Luca Cambiasso, um, he was an artist. And if you look at the work, I mean, it's extremely abstract, right? Like these like almost look like, don't they kind of look like modern uh, drawings? Like almost like something we do in like the modern age. Yet he was doing this like in Italy, you know, hundreds of years ago. So Luca Cambiasso, you could say like, why are we looking at this work? Like what about this pertains to a Thanksgiving feast? Well, in order to draw, um, in order to paint multi figures, we have to be able to simplify them into their most basic shapes. So I'm going to show you a few more things by Luca Cambiasso to show you that he was not just an artist who just rendered everyone's heads as like square blocks, but he used that to conceptualize a light striking a surface. And then he would take that and he would apply it to his complex detail paintings. So check it out. So the, this is another drawing by him. And I think you can see like in the turn of the head right here, you can see like, it just looks like nothing more than a block, right guys? Um, so really, really simple drawings. Um, now we're going to move forward and we're going to look at another drawing. So this drawing by Luca is a little bit, more um, developed and you can see more going on in the face right here. Like that's an awesome drawing. And uh, Daniel just wrote to the group uh, because of geometric essence. That's exactly right. Yep. That's it. Um, so he would take these very crude geometric essence ideas, then he'd develop them a little bit more and then he would do this painting. So I love this painting. So I, as a father, I have four kids and I love um, when just like seeing either myself, uh, just seeing, let's say my wife holding the baby or sometimes on Sunday morning in church, uh, there's a young man in our church. He's, he's younger than me and he has a baby and the baby sits on his shoulder and watches the whole entire congregation in church over his shoulder as he's holding the baby. Now I look at that. I'm like, Oh, I'd love to do a painting of a dad holding a baby. Like you never see that. How would you go about it? And th the way that you would go about it is geometric essence. And so Look at Luca Cambiasso's amazing, just like the way that the child is looking up. This is the same artist that did those really geometric drawings. So again, I'm using all this just as an example, because I want to show you how you can take really simple drawings and develop them into like something really complex. And so this is Jesus being presented to like Pontius uh, Pilate. Um, so back in the Renaissance in this day, a lot of the work was tailored for the early church. Um, and I'm just showing you all this because these are the paintings I could find by Luca. Um, and I just want to then roll over to Norman Rockwell. So you could see the concepts behind Norman Rockwell's work, how they were actually built on the very same tradition. So with that, we'll jump over to Norman Rockwell and we're going to take Norman Rockwell's feast we're going to simplify it into really really basic geometric essence and then we'll pick out a head i'll pick out one of the heads and we'll zoom in on it like something like this right here and we'll just like push the drawing along a little bit we're not we're not going to come up with like 
a finished tidy drawing of like a fantastic head but we're gonna get more of the concept so with that I'm gonna put the head up right here and then what I'm going to or I should say the Thanksgiving feast right here and then I'm going to begin the drawing right over here so uh, what I would say to you guys is if you want to get like a 2B pencil out um, my 2B pencil is getting a little bit short, so I plop it into here. Maybe I'll even sharpen it a little bit. There we go. Now I'm nice and ready to go. And with that, this is my pencil extender for all of you wondering what I'm actually uh, holding here. Now what I'm going to do is, you know what I, I might do? I might reduce the, the size of my drawing to like, just like a vertical slice on the page. Um, I'm not going to go with like a huge vertical drawing, but I'm going to go roughly like this right here. And that's a ballpark for the Thanksgiving feast. Just kind of give it like a good outline. And remember, in this drawing today, um, a lot of this drawing today is going to be just rough, crude shapes. Don't try to make anything fancy. So, okay, the table is like roughly, it's like... Uh, it's like somewhere between a third of the way down and almost to the halfway point. So it's like roughly like right there. And then the Thanksgiving turkey, we're just going to turn that into a big oval right here. That's the turkey and the platter all together. Just like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the biggest shapes in. So the biggest shapes are let's say all of the heads. So all of the heads would fit kind of into like a slice like this right here. So I'm really teaching you guys a lot today about like very, very abstract geometric design. And then here is the remainder of the heads like right here on this side with another head like specifically popping out like that. So that's the composition thus far. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mass in the grandmother. So the grandmother, her arms come out like this. And her shoulders kind of come straight across. And then her head is kind of like a cube. Like so. And I, I can refine all this much more in a little bit, but f suffice to say, this, this is fine for now. Um, I'm, I'm focusing on not having a beautiful drawing, which frees me up a lot. <laughs> if I really wanted to do a, a very nice drawing and make it like absolutely perfect, um, then I'd be like all tight and I'd be like frozen. But like, I don't need to focus on that at the moment. I'm probably gonna reduce the size of that head, but now I'm gonna get the the body of the father right here and so it's the father it's the grandfather here he is with his big shoulders um so i can see that i made this head uh too big which is it's not a problem um so i'm just going to slightly just like knock that back and then i'm just going to go a little bit smaller here which leaves me some breathing room and then i'm going to get the head of the grandfather right here and if I want I can even raise up my page a little bit higher like so and so the page I bought myself a little bit more room um, I'll always I'll do stuff like that oftentimes when I'm in a conceptual sketch you can't do that easily with canvas so I try to not ever run out of space on a canvas. The painter Velasquez worked on huge compositions and on some of his canvases you can see he stitched more fabric on because he ran out of room to paint on. <laughs> that must not have been fun. All right, so those are my rough shapes. That's my composition uh, of the whole entire uh, family right now. And so as you guys are working, what I would ask for you to do is to for a moment like pause and look at the size of like let's say the grandmother's head make sure that it fits uh on the canvas on the on the page nicely 
just like kind of like look at the negative space in between here you don't want to be too close over here in the corner so I feel pretty comfortable with this this feels all pretty good so now I'm gonna jump over and I'm gonna start the individual heads right here so okay so for this head of the young man turned and look looking at us it's gonna be roughly his head is roughly at the height of the turkey and so I'm just gonna put in a cube right here and there is his head kind of turned like so and again no detail given whatsoever then I'm gonna move on to the head of the father so uh, let's jump over so that you guys can see what we're actually working on so we just masked in that young man's head right there and then we're going to go now on to let's say this is an uncle uh, right here looks like an uncle to me and we're gonna put the uncle's head right here I'm making all this up I have no idea who these people actually are and okay so there is a, a cube for the uncle's head and now this is the ant right here and who's gonna come up with a name for this ant somebody's got a name for her and she's leaning forward like so and then I'm going to do this other guy this is the jokester of the family and his face I'll give him a little bit more detail his face kind of looks like a triangle and so again to jump back so you could see we're right here and we're looking at that head in the lower corner it kind of looks like a triangle to me like coming out to the side so we got all the big heads over here so now there's this little head of a girl that kind of like pops out a little bit from the rest of the, the heads that are hugging the side and the head of the girl is like roughly right here goes like so All right, so I can see that I made my turkey a little bit too big. Um, that's no problem at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the turkey, I'm going to do a turkeyectomy. I'm going to take in the turkey a little bit, and I'm going to put him on an actual platter. So there, isn't that an amazing drawing of a turkey on a platter? You guys are just stunned by that, right? Um, I'm joking. And I see a question here. Um, I want to do a painting of a woman in my church she plays the piano and I love how the light hits her face I was wondering if you had any good background suggestions um, that's an interesting question Charlotte and um, what probably would be my suggestion is to bring your sketchbook to church and then to look at her as she is um, actually playing and then take elements in the actual church around you like like look at what's going on in the church around you and then try to like sketch that out while you're sitting in church so I told my pastor years ago I said hey listen I attend your church and I'm happy to do so you will see me sketching from time to time because when you share sometimes I'm inspired for ideas for paintings and my pastor was like oh that's so cool <laughs> so um, that's my suggestion for a background is try to try to do it from actual life itself so now you can see I'm on to like maybe what would be like, I don't know, the grandmother or the grand aunt right here. And I'll even give her a nose. She's the first nose in the whole group. And now I'm on to the last one. Uh, the last head is this guy and he's looking down right here. And he has a cool look, the way he's like turned around and looking at the camera. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of draw him in a little bit more like a cube almost like turned towards us the rest of these cubes are more or less in profile like not entirely but I'm just summarizing it okay so we have that mapped out and that for me is actually to tell you the truth I know it sounds like I'm praising myself inordinately but um that's a pretty good map out of the composition you know there are there are things that are off here and there um, but I'm gonna like map out the window right here you can even put in the picture frame now this is how I myself will map out huge paintings. So I'm working on paintings 
um, in my studio at the moment. As you guys know, I have paintings on the other side of the room. So this is a painting right here. Um, I can show it to you from like a few different angles, like right there. Um, I'm not done with this painting and I showed it to you last week, but with this painting, um, what I'm going to do is I am working on this painting. Uh, I have to like bring like flesh color into the hands and things of that sort. And so as I work on this right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to really, uh, well, you know what? I'll leave off the flesh color and I'll say this. Everything here started out as a geometric shape. Everything here is a geometric shape. And working with all these geometric shapes, I was able to map out what was going on in a larger sense. And then I was able to go into details. So going back to our drawing, what I'm doing is I'm really trying to focus on the big picture, right? So now that we have that mapped out in the big sense, let's go into a little bit more detail so we could see kind of how this becomes relevant. So, all right, so I have the head right here of this young man, and he's kind of turned this way. And now I can like, let's say map out where his ear might be and his hair right here. And then this will be where his eyes are. Let's say this will be where his nose is. And let's say I could even hint at his eye being here. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go into crazy amounts of information. He's got a big smile, but you can see how I'm fitting in all the biggest shapes first. Now there's a little girl down here. I'm going to summarize the top of her hair as being just this shape of dark right here. And then her eyes, I'm just going to put in little dashes like so. That's the base of her nose. And then here's her mouth. So this is how you guys can map out pretty complex um, pieces. Like I love that Charlotte is thinking of uh, doing a painting of someone in her church. Um, that's so cool. And this is how you map things like that out. You start it all out really big and broad. Very, for me, I start out angular. I have friends of mine who don't work angularly um, in the beginning. They work in like more curves. But um, for me, I like angles because I can see the cutoff of the planes. So you see how I'm kind of like starting to get like, you can almost see like human like shapes starting to emerge. Then I'm going even more pictures, like let's say uh, more details uh, on these other heads right here. So let's say this is the woman's head that's uh, laughing into the side. I'll sketch in like roughly all of her hair like so. And I will then get her in this like full laugh like this right here. She has that great laugh and she's an eye smiler. You can see it from there. Then this guy, this guy down here, he's got a great nose. I think Norman Rockwell enjoyed drawing this guy's nose. And there is this guy. He's got even these big teeth, which are really fun and engaging. And then these, these tiny little eyes that are just squinting, laughing. My wife had an uncle and his name was Vito. And, um, he, when he would laugh, his eyes would disappear into these little tiny slits. And that's what that guy's eyes do when he laughs. So this allows you to take note of all the quick fleeting, um, facial gestures that people will have. And you can see in their, in the, the body language, you can see like what they are, um, thinking. So if you remember back to another lesson that we had, we were talking about Leonardo da Vinci and Leonardo da Vinci um, said to keep a journal on you at all times. And the journals that Leonardo da Vinci had could literally be this big right here. Here's um, like a size for like a little journal. And then he would do these like tiny little studies. And he said, draw the people in the streets around you, men getting into like arguments, how their hands are up like this and they're down like that. And he would do the same thing because people's body language is expressed. You can get it through like really quick lines and that's what we're doing right now. So, okay. So this woman is kind of like tilted towards us. 
she's got this like then she's got the most winning smile in the whole entire composition in my opinion her she's very very um just a beautiful woman and she has this like really nice smile and to me that was like a climax in the composition for norman rockwell so there she is now we have this older um what looks like maybe a, like um a grand great grandmother who knows so she's over here and she's got a very soft delicate smile she's gentle she's an echo of the younger woman which is really nice and has a poetry to it because <clears throat> how do you make something look very very young well you put it beside something that's very old and how do you make something look very tough and powerful well you put it next to something that's very frail and so there's all these like different ways that we can accent the character in a composition if you want to draw a very very f just beautiful precious little baby well then you could put it next to a big brood of a man and that like adds like some kind of like pathos to the comp composition norman rockwell was big into that he always loved pairing the old the young the beautiful young woman in her 20s and the great great grandmother who's like maybe in her 90s all right, so then now we're down to this head turned towards us. And we were thinking of it initially as being a cube. And then we went further and we we're going further now, I should say. And now we're just going to just quickly like rough out, you know, his face as it's turned towards us. And he's he his eyes pop in the whole composition. Look at how big his eyes are in the comp composition and then how small the other eyes are in the composition and to show you that we'll jump over and take a look at how big those eyes are and then like let's say take a moment to look at how small those eyes are in comparison in the composition like he really went to town with his guy in the lower corner and so uh that's that's like kind of like a you know something we'll punch in our own composition as i've done there um i'm going to skip all the detail of anything in the middle of the table except just to like rough it out with like shapes like you can put in like I don't know like something like for the cranberry sauce and stuff like that you just you know that's up to you you could do that um as you look at the composition but you can see right here how we really have mapped out pretty much the whole entire room let's jump uh lastly to the grandmother's head so she's kind of like turning down like so looking down this way i'm just gonna feather out her face right here and then i'm going to just hint only hint at the facial features as she's like concentrating and looking down and we'll just put in something gentle for her hair something really really succinct all right so kind of have that mapped out now um for the arm which is complex we're just going to think of it almost as being like almost as being like a cylinder that leads to like something like almost like a v shape for the upper arm I'm doing the same thing for this far arm right here. It's just more or less like a cylinder. And then for the figure of what I think is probably the grandfather, the reason why I say that is because he's got some young sons in his 20s here, it looks like. And then maybe that's a granddaughter. And then for the grandfather, again, we're just going to think of him as being just a big, broad um, cube. And then there is his nose and his eyebrows. We'll give him some delicate eyebrows. He's got a faint smile. And then his ears, because his head is tilted down, his ears are up here. So, okay, so we have the dinner roughly mapped out over here. Now what, um, what might be fun to do is we're gonna pick out one of those faces. <laughs> after I sharpen, we're going to pick out one of those faces and we're going to go into a little bit more detail with it. So I think that a good face to go into would probably be like this face 
of the young woman right here. And so I'm going to show you how I might map something like this out in order to capture her. Um, I am not at all assuming that I'm going to get a likeness of her, but I'll show you how I would attempt to get a likeness and then we'll just see where it goes. So, okay, so the head is like roughly turned right here. Um, I'm working on this woman right here, and I think it's worthwhile for me to jump over and to zoom into her head right there. So we're trying to get that beautiful young woman right there with her nice smile. And so I am gonna focus on, let me see, right there. Let me try to get even closer. Yeah, cool. So we can see it, her in some detail in this uh, little crop out. Maybe, you know what, maybe I will go smaller so we can see her full head. And right there. Cool. Um, so now I am going to, I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> I'm going to think of her hair. Um, her hair is is dark and so that gives us like a visual um just like something we can kind of like latch on to and so the hair kind of like takes up like 50 percent of the cube so i think it might be worthwhile for me to do um a really quick schematic for how i will get in the human head at different angles and so i'll do that right here just really abbreviated and so I will think of the human head when there's a lot of hair, almost as being a cube with a line through it. And then I will shade in 50% of that cube. I'll go a third of the way down, a third of the way down. That is roughly where the nose will land. And then I will put in like an angle for the upper lip, the lower lip. And this is just something I made up. Um, it does not apply to all people at all but you can use it as a rough template and then you can just vary it as you see fit so that you can you know weld it to different faces so every person would fit this template that i'm giving you differently and you know i'm making like right now just to give you an example i'm making a guy who has i don't know kind of like hair like that so that's roughly how i choose to see the human head when it's more or less in profile. Um, it's just a little Kevin trick. I'm not saying that any of the old masters taught this. It's just a trick that I come up with. I came up with. So back to the head right here. Um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to choose to see, remember we said the eyebrows come like a third of the way down. So from here to here, the front of the cube, this is about a third of the way down, like roughly. Those are the eyebrows. And then the base of the nose will be like another third. Um, again, these are all just very crude approximations. They're not laws of drawing all human faces. Okay, so I have that like roughly mapped out. Then I'm going to try to find like, okay, the, the mouth, she's in a full smile. So it's going to wrap around a little bit. So now I'm going to start to try to get into some of the more personal details, or you know, particular details. So I'm gonna go into that eyebrow over there, that far eyebrow, and then I'm going to get, like let's say, the far head right here. And I'm gonna get the eyebrow that is a little bit closer to us on the right hand side. Now you can see that I'm starting to get away from my cube drawing a little bit. I am, because I'm going into the more particulars. And then her nose turns right here and it comes up like so. And then the eye itself, I'm gonna think of it as just being like a dark, I don't know, kind of like a triangular-ish kind of shape right here. I'm gonna grab my eraser out. These are my searching lines. I'm just going to like kind of get rid of some of the searching lines and that is a triangle like right here and so I hope that you can see how you can work into these ideas to find more of the uh, 
the specific faces that you're actually looking for. And so somebody's asking to see the picture up close. So I'll zoom in right here and take a look at the picture up close. That's the head that we're working on. And in order for everyone to keep on being able to, to see that, um, hmm, maybe I will leave it like right there. Um, see if that like helps you because we're working with the facial features at the moment. And again, all of my lines are summary. There's a whole lot more detail in this woman's beautiful smile. Um, and I'm intentionally just ignoring all that extra information and choosing to just almost do like a cartoon outline of this because details would come later on. And you've heard me say this many times, you know, in, on my website, uh, on classical art, uh, at home.com, you hear me say how, um, first we see the forest and then we see the trees and then we see the tree branches and then we see the individual leaves. And then after that, we go on to like, let's say, I don't know, a bird sitting on a branch amidst the leaves. Like we, we can't go too specific too soon or we lose sight of the forest. So I'll keep this nice and broad for a, a long time, like a really long time. And I can't see her ear because it's blocked by the great grandmother over there. And I think that um, I can see right here that James is saying that it's the father, it's the father, it's the father. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that we have like this little battle. No, it's the grandfather. No, it's the father. No, it's the grandfather. Um, <laughs> all right. So now, um, I have the hair to go on to, you know, I want to keep this all really, really brief. I don't want to get into individual hair or anything like that, but I'm going to just take this. I'm going to tidy up my drawing by erasing away some of those earlier construction lines like so. And then I'm going to go back so that you guys can see her up close again. So here she is up close. And you'll be able to see the, um, you'll be able to see her on the website. We'll upload that. Um, when I upload the video, um, I'll be sure to have an image of this also like on the video. So you can see it at the end, if you want to pause it there. So here, um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the grandmother, uh, right below her, maybe the great grandmother. And she kind of comes like this. I will not be drawing the great grandmother, but I just want to show us where the cutoff for the drawing is. I'm going to erase away all those early construction lines. Um, I made her chin. Uh, too sharp and which is how I work in the beginning. I work very angular. Uh, so now what I, if I wanted to push the drawing much further, what I would probably do is I'd get like a pencil that's like long and sharp. Um, like let's say like a two H pencil or an H pencil, see how long and sharp this is. And then what I would do is I would start to, I'd probably, you know, I'd erase away a lot of these lines and I'd start to go even more delicate yet. Uh, like her lower lip, uh, because it's a young woman, uh, the lower lip is full right here and it has like this, it's pronounced. And so then, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm capturing her so well, but this, these are the things that I would be shooting for. And then the, the chin turns gracefully. It can't turn abruptly because if it does, it implies like if it's a sharp, harsh angle, either it's masculine or it could be older. Um, so the lines of a young, beautiful, uh, figure, whether that's like a little child, a young boy, um, a woman, uh, they turn very gently and gracefully oftentimes. So, okay. So here is her neck coming down here. And now I'll show you how I would even be able to start to hint at the light falling on her face. Um, by doing a very, very crude, quick map out of the light hitting the side of her nose right here, the light hitting the side of her cheek. 
very, very generalized. Just thinking of her almost as being like a geometric essence shape, like a cube that's getting hit from with side light. And I'll jump back again to a darker pencil and I'll just put in a broad mass. You know what I'll do is I will jump over to my graphite powder and I'll grab that graphite powder. I always keep it in the bottom. I have like these like lids to jars and I have my graphite powder in there. And so I'll take that, go back to my drawing. I'll put some in my hands and then I'll just quickly rough out her hair right here. Like so. And with that, I pretty much have the head in an early stage of what it might look like before I map it out and I put it into the drawing. When I'm done with it, I usually pour my graphite powder back in. It makes a bit of a mess and I usually have it on my hands afterwards. That's why I always go home and my kids say to me, Dad, you have graphite or something or, you know, all over your face. Um, so that happens to me pretty often. So that is like, let's say the bottom of her eyelid. Now I'm starting to get into more detail. Um, you can refine things at this stage. You can like start to correct angles that you did earlier on that were incorrect. This is just an eraser right here. Um, you can soften certain transitions. You can get like, there's this laugh line right here at the corner of her mouth and it, then there's this almost like a little dimple right here. Now you can start getting into more specifics. So the thing that I want to emphasize as you look right um, at the drawing right now is you can almost think of that head now as being something that you could pick up and you could drop onto that earlier composition drawing that we did with just geometric essence. So this right here is just geometric essence. Think again of Luca Cambiasso and how Luca Cambiasso just had nothing but like figures that were just geometric essences. And then look back at our drawing. So this is all nothing but geometric essence. And then we took it and we developed this head right here into more information. And as we developed it into more information, that enabled us to then think, oh, well, if we were doing this on a bigger composition, we could have taken this, we could drop it right there, we could develop it further. First it's geometric essence, then it's, you know, developing the planes with more specifics. So as you look at um, this right here, that's exactly what Luca Cambiasso did. Luca, um, he would go in and he would then render like that beautiful baby's face looking up at the mother. I love the light hitting the mother's forehead. I think it's really beautiful. Um, and that's how Luca worked. Um, that's how Norman Rockwell worked. So um, there are people, there are those of you on this call that you could say like, well, you know, I don't want to work like Norman Rockwell or I don't want to work like, I don't know, Luca Cambiasso. Like I have different things I want to do. But what I would say to you is even if you don't want to work like these artists, still there are artists um, who use these concepts for things like Pixar animation. I don't know, are any of you guys into like graphic novels at all or anything of that sort? Um, the graphic novel artists all use this. Cartoonists use this. Fashion designers use this. So they all use geometric essence and then they build their worlds on top of it. I'm friends with um, an artist, Ben Hatke, and he wrote the book series Zeta, the Space Explorer. Has anyone ever heard of Zeta? The, I think it's Zeta, the Space Explorer. Um, so he's a children's book, comic book artist. Um, and he writes his own novels, like graphic novels, and he illustrates them. And he uses this exact concept right here to make his worlds. And the cool thing is my friend's comic books at some point in the future might be turned into a, a full movie. So I just think that's pretty neat. I went to school with this guy, Ben Hackey in Italy. I am grateful for all of you guys. And I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks.